Hey guys, Andrew here, and today I got a question for you. Was Leo Fender responsible for the Gibson Les Paul guitar? So you've seen the title of my video. Was Leo Fender responsible for the Les Paul guitar? I know what you're thinking. How could Leo Fender possibly be responsible for the Les Paul guitar. Let me explain what I'm talking about. Gibson Guitars started building mandolins and some acoustic guitars and stuff about 1902, I think, so whenever the company started. They were building guitars. They weren't doing, um, they were doing like hollow body electrics, but they weren't doing solid body electrics. Now, nobody really was back then. Then in 1948, a guy pretty much not known at all, Leo Fender, started making a broadcaster or an Esquire which he later changed the name to a Telecaster in uh, 1948 or 49. He changed it to um, Telecaster. He brought out his Telecaster design in 1948. Gibson Guitars at the time was also working on some solid body guitars. Leo Fender's Telecaster was doing really good in Southern California. It was big into the country music and the Telecaster kind of took off into country music. That's why it's so big in country today. Meanwhile, Gibson was working on a couple um, hollow body guitars, semi hollow body guitars, and was trying to get into the solid body guitar market. In 1952, Ted McCartney, well, let's go back. In 1950, I think it was 1950, Ted McCartney was hired by Gibson to run the company. So he started introducing solid body guitars. In 1952, with the help of Les Paul, they introduced the Les Paul guitar. Now, 48 was the Telecaster, 52 was the Les Paul. Now, the reason I say Leo Fender is responsible for Les Paul is Leo Fender in 1948, 49, 50, 51 was killing Gibson in sales. So because they were kind of competing against each other, uh, Fender, Leo was relatively unknown in 1948. No one knew who he was, a small guy, but he was able to get a lot of sales and get his name out a lot over a company that had been in business for over 40 years building guitars. Whenever Leo starts building these Telecasters getting really good um, reviews, getting selling a lot of them, stuff like that. Gibson felt they needed to step up their game. One of the ways they stepped up their game was building a solid body Les Paul. If Leo Fender hadn't been killing them in sales and being so doing so good in sales, then Gibson might not have invented the Les Paul guitar. You can see where I'm coming from, where the Leo Fender is responsible for the Les Paul guitar. In 1952, the Les Paul guitar is designs and hits the market. In 1954, Leo Fender introduces the Stratocaster guitar because in the Telecaster was basically a, a slab body, had no contours, no belly cut, no armrest, nothing. It was just a slab, inch and a half thick. Um, ash and pine was the mainly the, what he was using in the beginning. Um, he ended up going ash and older later. In 1954, he introduced the Stratocaster. Now, the reason he brought the Stratocaster out, like I said, um, was because he put an armrest on it. He put a belly contour in it and made it more comfortable to play. It still had a double cutaway instead of a single cutaway. That was in 1954. In 1961, because the Les Paul sales were so bad, they actually redesigned the Les Paul into what is now known as the SG. So from 1961 to 1968, the Les Paul wasn't even made at all. It was the SG. Then in 1968, they brought the Les Paul back in, reintroduced it in 1968 and started selling it again. That's just a little history on uh, Gibson guitars and Fender guitars and that is why I say that Leo Fender is responsible for the Gibson Les Paul guitar. The reason I say that is if Leo Fender wasn't killing Gibson in sales in the 40s, in the 50s, in the 60s, I don't think Gibson would have been pushing so hard to come up with new designs, pushing so hard to come up with ways to try to get their sales back up to what Leo is doing. Because you got to remember, you got a com company that's been going building guitars for 40 years, and now you got this new guy coming out that's relatively unknown, no one really knows of him, and now he's killing this Gibson in sales, and he's not doing it like one or two years, he's doing it 10, 15, 20 years every year, just killing him in sales. It's going to make this other company go back and look at their products and look at ways to re redesign guitars or design new guitars or come up with concepts on to get more sales into the company. Okay, guys. That's it. I just want to make a quick video on why I think Leo Fender is responsible for the Gibson Les Paul 
guitar. Go in the comment section below and tell me what you think. You think I'm full of shit? Or do you think what I say actually makes sense? Also, don't forget to check out my website, andrewallenguitars.com. Also, go to my website, um, Andrew Allen Guitars. Anyways, that's it. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in another video.